Well, thank you and welcome. Obviously, this is an overwhelming crowd and we're very appreciative of your time. We also want to recognize all of the wonderful people that are Zooming in. Thanks for the hybrid opportunities that uh, COVID has allowed us. You're here today because we would like to share with you as the Gini Steering Committee, the blueprint, a blueprint for immigrant inclusion. Uh, if you haven't had a chance, you'll see at the back table, there's a cop there are copies of this beautiful uh, blueprint in English and in Spanish. You can get executive uh, summaries in Portuguese, Mandarin Chinese, Haitian Creole, Vietnamese, and Portuguese. And a special shout out to Gainesville Police Department for their incredible support with the translation of those materials. So as we get started, there are a few thank yous and just a few little housekeeping parts of uh, details, washrooms to the back. Afterwards, we will be offering some refreshments. So let me introduce myself. My name is Robin Louie. I'm the co-lead for the Ginny Project. Ginny stands for the Gainesville Immigrant Neighbor Inclusion Initiative. You can see why we call it Ginny, a lot easier, right? Um, but there has to be a very warm thank you to Deborah Bowie, who as assistant city manager was really the person who we were able to work with to get a grant that allowed us to come to this point, which is the launching of hours and hours of work with over 100 community members uh, sharing their perspectives and 182 foreign born neighbors that participated in the surveys, which are still available for uh, participation. As we look at where we are, I do want to remind those that are online that they can find a copy of the Ginny Blueprint at Gainesville Immigrant Neighbor. Dot org. That's all together, GainesvilleImmigrantNeighbor.org. Um, and again, there you will find those summaries and the blueprint downloadable. Also at that location, you can find the surveys also available in five uh, different languages aside from English um, to help our uh, foreign born neighbors that may be uh, limited English proficient speakers to be heard. As we go on, a uh, quick hats off to City Fellow, uh, Sofia Corredo, who was an amazing support, um, especially in our early days and in working with Ms. Bowie on the grant and the work. So an applause for her, please. <laughs> and that leads us to Chief Inspector Jamie Kernick, who in the last couple of months has really been the one helping to support, to bring this to where we are today. And as the steering committee, we are profoundly appreciative of the respect, support, and excitement that you've exhibited in this work. So thank you very much for that. <laughs> and of course, I can't forget um, a new coworker of mine who spent the last five months really ushering this along as a coordinator of the steering committee, and that would be Ethan Mai de Nidal, who um, is amazing. I don't know where he is. And, though, and now to be able to get this program started, uh, first of all, a recognition and appreciation for representatives of both the city and the county commission. We're pleased that you're here to share, with, share this experience, this opportunity to learn more about the work that we're doing. Um, this is the first time the blueprint has been seen. So we will try in a 45 minute period to offer you an overview. Um, and we will encourage all of you to take a copy home to read yourself. A deep and warm thank you to the Matheson History uh, Museum, where you are today, which has really opened their hearts and willingness to learn more about immigrant communities, which is in line with their commitment to diversity in our communities. And so I would like to introduce the board of directors of the Matheson History Museum, Mr. Robert Mounds. He'll just uh, help us to introduce a couple of our speakers. Thank you. I'm Robert Mounts, current president of Matheson, and on behalf of our executive director, Caitlin Hoff Mahoney, and our board, we're gratified to see this event here and all of you masking up, <laughs> even though I just took mine off for this uh, thing. But we are particularly pleased at the Matheson, which is a nonprofit 
uh, dependent entirely on donations and on grants to keep our four buildings afloat and, and on community support to be able to support this event. We have a very strong uh, history of supporting diversity as evidenced by the recent Johns Committee exhibit, which was taken down a few months ago. And before you leave, I hope you will see the new one, Black Thursday, the uh, black students' uh, demonstrations uh, against President Stephen O'Connell, you know, in the 70s. Uh, the history of Gainesville has always been about uh, fighting for diversity and inclusion. And Matheson is happy to be part of that, and we appreciate all of you being here today. So my main job is to introduce uh, the chair of the county commission, Mary Helen Wheeler, who I've known for a long time. I'm really happy, to, as I told her just now, to, that she got her turn to be the chair. She's gonna be a great chair. And also somewhere in this crowd is our mayor, Mayor Lauren Poe, who is uh, in his last year of term of office. We don't agree on everything, but we certainly agree on this, Mr. Mayor. And I appreciate both of you being here. They will announce the program. Thank you. If I could ask Mayor Poe to please come forward. Thank you. Hey, good afternoon, y'all. I was uh, just talking with my friend, uh, Steve Kalishman over there, uh, who's uh, been working for a long time on uh, immigrant issues and inclusivity issues with our city. And we were just both so impressed with how many people are here, Robin, on a three o'clock on, a, on a, a, a weekday afternoon. And I think it just shows uh, the sort of compassion and and uh, caring that our community leads with, uh, and, and it just is really heartwarming to see all of you here. Uh, so uh, I think the, the first point I wanna make uh, is today is not the end of anything, it's the beginning. It's, it's the end of the beginning, uh, if you will. Uh, what you're gonna see today and the recommendations that spring forth from these efforts are going to be a starting point that we will continue to build on, uh, not just the city, but an entire community uh, as we try to become uh, you know, a fully inclusive and fully welcoming community to all of our neighbors. Uh, so that's exciting that we're at this point. It just uh, means that there's a lot of hard work ahead of us. Uh, and uh, so th the reason I'm excited about where we are right now really falls into two broad categories. Uh, the first is that every person uh, who calls himself our neighbor uh, should be able to afford all of the benefits and all of the uh, wonder that is our city that's part of living in a civilized uh, world, right? That, that every part of what we experience, everybody's able to experience seamlessly uh, and simply, uh, whether that's uh, you know, using our tra transportation system to accessing city services to registering their uh, you know, child for classes at, at a new elementary school. Um, so that's just really operational, right? It's, it's not sexy but uh, it's important work that is necessary to make sure that we are welcoming and inclusive for everybody. So the city's already started down that path. We've, we've directed our city manager, who I wanna acknowledge her. Uh, Ms. Curry is here today as well. Uh, there's a ton of city folks here, y'all. Um, uh, but uh, she, she's already working on an implementation plan uh, for our language inclusion component of this, but there's a lot of work um, that is still left to be done. So, so we're excited to sort of get those nuts and bolts uh, implemented as, as our standard operating procedure. But the, the part that really gets me excited and, and the part that I'm looking forward to uh, helping build out and participate for years to come, long after uh, I'm done being that mayor guy, uh, is, is how we help elevate and celebrate all of the diversity we have in this city. The thing that makes Gainesville so extraordinary is our international uh, community and the, and the blending of culture that comes from all around the world and, and, and calls Gainesville home. Uh, and, and that's so exciting, but also so sort of siloed and, and, and um, uh, not, not uh, you know, well uh, integrated into our everyday uh, experience, you know. And so I want a, a city where we're walking down the street and we're hearing music uh, from all around the world and we're seeing, uh, you know, the, the um, you know, different things that make us individuals, but also part of a, a collective whole. Uh, and, and that's where the entire community gets to be involved and gets to really roll up our sleeves and figure out uh, how we build that community that looks like, sounds like, smells like, tastes like uh, uh, everybody that, that we call our neighbor. Um, so again, it's great to be at the end of the beginning, Robin, uh, but I think the challenge that uh, we will hear repeatedly today is let's get to work. We've got a lot of it to do. Thanks for all being here and being part of this.
Thank you, Mayor Poe, and thank you to all of the city, uh, city staff and commissioners that are here today. It is true that a lot of what you're going to hear about today, we have already seen getting going, right? We're, on, we're in the move. We're not uh, just beginning to start thinking about action is being taken. We appreciate that. And as the mayor has said, at least one in 10 of our neighbors is foreign born. Um, so th we're not talking about small numbers. We're talking about thousands of people that are here at a part of our community, and we appreciate that. It also means that we need to make the link into the county. So yes, you know that Ginny stands for Gainesville. Well, we're gonna put the Alachua right next to that. Um, as the steering committee worked together, it was very clear, um, and also under the direction of Ms. Bowie, that there really aren't borders when we're in our community, right? I don't know when I'm driving outside of Gainesville and when I'm in actually Alachua County. Um, it is clear that this is work that we all have to do together, and I'm happy to ask um, Ms. Mary Helen Wheeler, our County Commission Chair, to come forward and share a few words. Good afternoon, everyone. I just want to look at you a minute from here because it brings back memories of nine years ago when we started big gatherings like this to work on immigration reform. Uh, this community has been working for many years now towards this or, or as a way to have another way to approach immigration reform. I have some notes here that I want to share with you from our county, but then I'm going to share a few remembrances uh, with you from the work that we've done over the last decade in coming to this point in history for ourselves in the community. And over the past couple of years, the county staff has been actively participated on the Gainesville Immigrant Native uh, Neighbor Initiative Jenny Stirring Committee. For well over a year, the committee has been looking at ways to address the language access barriers experienced during the COVID outbreak and ensure that all residents of Alachua County have equal access to critical life safety information. And Fran Ricardo and Robin, thank you all for being the ones who constantly call to say, you're not doing it, you're not doing it. So these folks from the community are the ones who are making sure that these of us in the county are remembering to do it. Um, the Ginny language access proposal is designed to build the language access infrastructure for more effective communication with our diverse community and more inclusive county government programs and services. The plan will be presented to the board on May 10th. This is the kind of thing they give me because they never sure what I'm gonna say. I'm going to say now what I want to say. I taught at Westwood Middle School for 22 years, and I was the art teacher there, which meant that I got all the kids there, including the Esau kids. This is where I first began to understand the needs of our immigrant community here, particularly of our migrant farm working families. You will remember names like um, AIJ, I don't know, Interfaith Alliance for Immigrant Justice was very active back in those days still is. We worked across county lines with Marion County as well. So because of the farm workers and the horse industry that used so many of these families, we were involved with, at the public school where we couldn't ask anybody about you know, what their situation was, what was their status. We were not allowed to do that, but we knew that these children who were struggling with the language we had to make sure went home to actually make sure that their parents were learning English too. Because it's not just up to the kids to learn the culture and take it home. The parents also have to be assimilated in order to be able to access what programs we have for folks in our community. The labor coalition, the labor, we work with the Mockley workers here. South Florida, we had Immokalee workers in here regularly in the community who were sharing with us. We're still going to get publics to pay an extra penny a pound for tomatoes, y'all. Chispas, I don't know if you all remember La Casita. I love that little house. It is now a grand uh, Casa Grande. I am not speak Spanish. But it's not what the La Casita was, which was a wonderful gathering place for our chispas and our DACA kids that we were advocating so strongly for. Um, one of the reasons that I got political in 2014 was immigration reform. And I used to tell everybody, you know, if I could get the Oklawaha freed and immigration reform done, I could retire happily. So far, we've not done either one. But with the efforts of this community that have been ongoing for some time now, 
we've found a way to work around what our legislators are trying to keep us from doing. And so I think this is brilliant and a, and a great way for us to make our community ready. The community ID program, rural women's health projects, you know, all of these are things that have been going on for some time now. So we're ready. We're ready for what is, is coming. And what is coming, you, you guys know, is historic. You know, if you remember your history and remember about migrations from Africa into Northern Europe, and if you remember about the land bridge bringing people from the East into North America, this is not new. Migration is real, it's happening now, and we're witnessing to it. And there's something quite amazing about that, really, to be on the cusp of history, history where we're seeing things that are gonna be changed in this world forever. Migration of humans and animals, it's natural. It's happened forever. But now we have war, we have, um, we have weather systems that are going to be forcing us closer together. And, and I would just say that I'm really proud that this community is addressing it um, from a, an educated way and also from the heart. So thank you all very much for being here. It's so good to see the new faces here that have come forward now to make this happen and to make immigration an important part of what we are doing culturally. So, you know, call your, call your politicians, guys. Just saying. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you, and I'm, I'm really glad that Commissioner um, Wheeler has made it clear that the county has been playing a role within the actual Jenny Steering Committee from the beginning. So special hats off to Deidre Hutchin and to Jackie Chung for their willingness to spend time with us, to recognize the needs, and to take some actions in order to uh, improve um, inclusion of all people within our community. So now we actually have a Zoom presenter, so we're gonna try and make sure this works. Look at that, it's wonderful. I um, want to share with you a, a person who is very important to the Ginny Steering Committee and the work that we've done, and that's Jordan Crumroy. She is the Senior Regional Manager of Welcoming America. She, in partnership with another amazing woman named Liani Garcia Torres, who's the Deputy Director of States and Local Initiatives at the American Immigrant Council, have been our technical and our emotional support uh, during this process. And what makes them amazing is that they have seen in so many different communities of the same size, similar universities and so forth, how change is possible. And even towards certification, a goal that we have for both the city and the county to become certified welcoming uh, communities. So if I may introduce Ms. Jordan Crumroy. This is a movement of communities who see strength rather than a threat in our new neighbors. 
A movement that today is making it possible for more Americans, whether we just arrived or been here for generations, to be full participants in the civic, the social, and the economic fabric of the places we call home. So after today, we moved from planning to doing. This blueprint is map. Uh, but you all are the drivers, working to end discrimination, reduce barriers, and to strengthen bonds across line of difference. So I'd like to challenge each of you all to take that blueprint, find something that utilizes your strengths or your networks, and get involved in turning this blueprint into action. Uh, what means it looks like in 30 years depends on what you commit to do today. The success of the blueprint depends on the willingness of leaders like yourselves in the room and on Zoom to see it through, from envisioning to enacting. We at Welcome to America and the American Immigration Council will continue to be a resource to you, and we look forward to celebrating many more milestones in the years to come. So I thank you for joining us today as we celebrate and reaffirm our commitment to work for a so where neighbors support neighbors, systems facilitate equity, and policies within the art of justice. Thank you all. Thank you, Jordan, and we look forward to her and possibly Ms. Garcia Torres joining us here in Gainesville in the next few months, especially as we're taking steps forward with the city, the county, and the school system in order to address the goals that she has outlined of unity, of inclusion, of respect, and uh, a community. So to give a little background about to Ginny, I would like to introduce Chief Inspector Jamie Kernick from Gainesville Police Department. Good afternoon and thank you so much for this honor today. It's a truly an honor to be here. And to give you a little background on Jenny, and it's, it's been an interesting kind of ride. So it started out with a, a, a call for service where the Gainesville Police Department could have done a better job in terms of translation. And what do we do with information when we get it is we're going to change what we do and how we do it to provide better service to the community. And by listening to the group, which started off a very small group and has now worked up to 60 individuals in the Ginny group, besides five different subcommittees, is they recommended suggestions for us to do to make us better and to provide better service for those individuals who do not speak English as their primary language. And currently, if you call the Gainesville Police Department 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you need help and you do not speak English as your first language, we have a translation service that is there that can provide that kind of communication between the police officers and the individuals on the scene who are asking for help. The neatest part about my involvement in this group is how much I've learned from each of the individuals who have provided suggestions, not only for the police department, but for the city, the county, and everyone else for us to be a more inclusive community here in our area and we have such diversity it is amazing to see the number of people here because we were talking about it planning this event going i hope everybody shows up so for each of you that is here thank you so much for coming to hear about this this project so the Ginny steering committee started out small came into a huge group and we meet monthly with our five subcommittees meeting all the time and they deal with health and safety they deal with so many different things about how we can do language inclusion. And how we got to here was two months ago, a little over two months ago, I was asked to kind of be that city liaison for this project and to immerse myself into what's been happening and all the work that has done previously. But the kudos and a big round of applause for every member of the steering committee that's in the audience, because they're the ones that did the work on this. We're just kind of the liaisons that have helped. So big round of applause. So this steering committee has come up with all the work that is included in this blueprint. They spent countless hours going over this presentation, over the blueprint itself, and also getting a survey out into the community to ask the community what do they need. One of the tenets of community policing that I have endure, learned from the best, who is Chief Tony Jones, he's in the room, I have to give him a plug over there, about community policing is actually listening to those who you serve and listening to what they're saying to you and how they're saying it, and really doing something with it. It's not about just hearing, it's about doing something with it. So truly, 
in this model and with this group, they provided several suggestions. We presented to the commission on the 17th of March, and it was talking about language inclusion, translation services, having a community immigrant liaison within the city. These are some of the asks that the committee believes would actually push forward language inclusion across the city of Gainesville. Truly, it has been an honor to hear the, the different recommendations and to listen to the stories of people who have lived within our community and come from somewhere else. It's been an honor to be part of this group and a huge thank you to Robin Louie and Ethan DeMaio. I'm telling you, I, I can't say thank you enough to them. They have done and coordinated so much of this event and so much of the immigrant blueprint from the bottom to the top. So I encourage you to read that blueprint. I encourage you, if you have people who speak other languages, we have the summary translated. And I encourage everyone, if you know someone that could fill out one of those surveys, to fill it out so that we can work on better and more inclusive service. That is what Ginny is all about. It's about providing a voice for those who may not be able to understand what kind of services the city does provide. So I thank you for your time and I thank you for this honor, Robin. So as we're hearing a little bit about um, who has been behind this work, um, we would be negligent not to name certain organizations that have been co-sponsors. That would start with the Alachua Hare Krishna Temple, the Anti-Hate Team of Florida, the Children Beyond Our Borders, Human Rights Coalition of Alachua County, the Interfaith Alliance for Immigrant Justice, Language Access Florida, Madres Sin Fronteras, the North Central Florida Social Service Hispanic Alliance, the Rural Women's Health Project, and Welcoming Gainesville and Alachua County. That's a mouthful. And it really represents, um, I think, that what we're working towards, which is really recognizing all of us have areas of specialty, and we have ways in which we all together can lift up our community. Uh, now to get into the blueprint. So what we're going to do is address the five goals that are outlined in the print materials that you've seen. For those that are just joining in on, um, on Zoom, please remember to go to Gainesville immigrantneighbor.org for a copy of that to follow along. And what I'd like to do is introduce first uh, Veronica Robleto. She has been working and addressing uh, immigrant safety in our community and has really been crucial to both articulating different, difficult uh, community interactions as well as helping to define opportunities for a safer community. Uh, Veronica, please come forward. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so excited to be here to share with you um, what we've come up with, with um, under the safety work group. So as uh, Chief Inspector Koenig mentioned, we separated into different focus groups. And when we speak of safety, the first thing that might come to mind is being a victim of crime in the heat of a, a, a mo in the moment of a dangerous moment. Um, that's not all we mean when we speak of safety. When we speak of safety, we mean feeling safe just to exist in this community, to take your children to school, to drive to work, to go to a city event. So we really focused in on what can we do better to make this a truly and tangibly safe community for our immigrant neighbors. I also want to acknowledge we, we're talking about diversity a lot today. We do have a diverse community and if you're not um, a descendant of a Native American or a person that was brought here against their will in the slave trade, you are a descendant or are an immigrant yourself. So just to give that um, some honor as well. We have the survey that we put out to uh, about 180 individuals, and we hope that you can get it out to more foreign-born neighbors as well. And something that really stood out is that 17% told us that they do not feel safe here in Gainesville. 20% said they felt moderately safe. So that's a pretty large percentage that aren't quite feeling safe. And my personal perspective has been working as a paralegal, a legal advocate, working with immigrants on their legal cases. And let me tell you that that is used against individuals that are in vulnerable situations every day. So the fact 
that someone might not know what the law is, what their rights are. People who perpetrate harm use that every day against those individuals. So we really, it's two-sided when we talk about safety. There's what the institutions, the government entities, the service providers can do and should do, and then there's the other side of empowering our immigrant neighbors to know their rights and responsibilities within the community. Um, so if you're looking at the slide here, we have those kind of two-sided parts to safety and really making our community a safe environment. Um, I'm happy to say that some of our goals um, and our outcomes that we hope to produce, um, we've had some victories that I'd like to um, name right now. Um, so a few weeks ago, the city commission voted unanimously to create a, a community liaison, a immigrant liaison position to help kind of facilitate all of these um, initiatives um, to be a point of contact for immigrants that may have issues, may have difficulties, because we know this, this feels good today, but we're gonna continue to have issues, right? We're gonna have to continue to address problems. So this person will be a point of contact. Um, they will continue to work with the Ginny Steering Committee who is committed to, to continue this work. Um, we also have some victories to name with our local uh, police department. Um, they officially accept the community ID, which is a local identification that's available to those that have barriers to accessing government ID. Um, and they've done a training with their officers so that someone on the street, if they're asked for their ID when interacting with law enforcement, they can show their community ID and that is respected as photo ID. So we urge our sheriff, Watson, to, to join on with uh, GPD in officially accepting the community ID. Um, we've also update, been able to update, um, through the help of Chief Inspector Koenig, some policies um, in the Gainesville Police Department with added protections for individuals who have limited proficiency in the English language. Going back to my personal experience, if you're in a situation where someone is being harmed and the person harming speaks fluent English and the person that's being harmed does not speak English, they call for help, law enforcement arrives, the English speaker might be able to take over right away, right? So that's why this cultural um, training for law enforcement is so important so that we don't just automatically defer to the person who speaks English or that the person who speaks a little bit of English, we don't assume that that's good enough. Another uh, victory that I want to say that just happened, I think, yesterday, um, which I had, we had been uh, asking uh, GPD to do, is to create uh, public service announcements. We have a few in Spanish now, and we're looking forward to other languages where they're saying from their agency that you, know, you can safely call Gainesville Police Department and you will be served in your language. So we think that that's really powerful to have that coming from the mouth of you know, the agency that they are going to have to call. So we're happy to share those. Um, and so looking forward, like I said, the Ginny Steering Committee, we're gonna continue to meet and we're excited to engage in Know Your Rights um, workshops and presentations. Um, GPD has already agreed to participate in these listening sessions that we um, mentioned where you know, willing um, immigrant groups or churches um, that will be willing to host uh, the Gainesville Police Department, would the, they would come in and listen. You know, not, not present about what they're doing in that moment, but listen to what would actually make people feel safer. Um, so thank you so much. Um, we have all of our goals spelled out in our blueprint, so please take a look. And I'm honored to be part of this uh, project. Thank you. So certainly safety was the groundwork behind Ginny, but it doesn't stop there. Just like this is not just about language access, this is really about things that are broader. I would like to bring Barbara McDade Gordon up from Welcoming America and Alachua, uh, Welcoming Gainesville and Alachua County to address community engagement and the celebration of the diversity that we have in our community. Thank you, Robin. And I would also like to just recognize 
uh, Steve Kalishman, who is the Vice President of Welcoming Gainesville in Alachua County, and he's been working for a long time. I, look, do I see Robin? Robin Pointer as well. And my husband, <laughs> who's here. Uh, he's President of the United Nations Association of Gainesville, who also works in trying to make this a more inclusive community. Now, uh, civic engagement, that is definitely where the rubber meets the road. Uh, as Robin mentioned, and we're talking about this, a third of the respondents feel that they are not included and uh, don't feel they belong in our community. And then there are you know, 25% that don't feel that the community uh, uh, listens to them. But on the other hand, as a flip side, as I mentioned to Robin, uh, two thirds of the respondents of this uh, you know, survey feel that their voice is heard. Two thirds, you know, so that is a good start and a feeling that we can build upon that. And as you see here, 80% of respondents want more opportunities to become fully included in the community. Uh, the goals that we have established in this uh, Jenny Blueprint uh, create uh, positions within the city and county. Of course, the official positions, a visible immigrant inclusion section uh, in the cities and county, counties website uh, look at inclusion of, of, of opportunities for people who need or who are not proficient English speakers and to assist them in becoming more proficient as English speakers. That's important. Uh, civic knowledge. And now this is what our residents can do. And this is for all of us. Join, attend, become visible. Let people know that you are here. Let other residents know that you're here. Become visible. When people know you, then they're more likely to listen to you. And this is what we need to do. Gainesville is an immigrant community. I came here 30 years ago uh, from Texas. Uh, but it, you know, trying to get in and to join organizations and become a part of the community, it's still an issue. I I'm not saying that I have the same issues as perhaps a person who's coming from Iraq or I was just talking to a young lady from Cuba, Cuban American, or Haiti, or whatever. But there are still issues that we want to become more involved. So become involved for your family. Now I just uh, met, and I had sent a, a, an email, an invitation to her, Mary Benedict, Benedict of the uh, PTA, the Elijah County Council of PTAs. And when I first came here, my son was in middle school in Howard Bishop. He was in the seventh grade. And I joined the PTO, that's what it was called at the time. That is instant in. The PTA, and Mary said uh, that stands for PT for all. I like that. And that is an instant in. They want you to come. They want volunteers. Everyone loves volunteers. They really do. The city and county commission, the boards, the committees, there are all sorts of things that we as citizens can become involved. And I know that some people may feel initially reluctant, but I found Gainesville to be a welcoming place. There are barriers, you know, I mean, even when I joined the Band Parents Association at Gainesville High School, you know, there were people, well, who are you? You know, are you from here? You know, that type of thing. But, you know, my son was in a band, so, you know, I stayed there. Uh, as I told my students, democracy is more than just a wonderful philosophy. You know, it's an interesting idea, yes, but basically it means that you have more people, more people are involved, more ideas, more input, more suggestions. And that is good for all and that's good for our city. Now, this, this might sound small, but community dance groups, community theater, I know you're busy. I'm busy, I, I'm, I'm retired, but I was busy when I was working. And if you could start a club in your housing complex or neighborhood, invite people over. Invite, you don't have to cook a full meal. I, when I was at University of Texas, Austin, I was a graduate student, I was an adult, and there had been a lady that, you know, she walked, uh, she got walking, and we were about the same age, you know, in our 30s or whatever. And I invited her in for ice cream. She was from Pakistan. And she said she had been at University of Texas, Austin, and Austin is a wonderful city for five years and never before had an American invited her into their home. And she cried and I cried. But that is a start. You don't have to fix a full course meal. This was ice cream. 
This is a start. Join next door online. Those types of things. I was talking to Alexandra Sanatius, who is all, was also on the civic engagement steering uh, uh, part of the steering committee, and I asked her about some, some of the ideas she had. She mentioned that at Aquin Jones Museum had an event, Aquin Jones, which is a city museum, had an event uh, called Black Love Creative Expressions in uh, its gifts, and they brought people together. These are uh, primarily, you know, black people, uh, but that was all from all over the city who were from various places, uh, you know, Americans or from, you know, other places, and they got a chance to talk and hear each other. So these are the kinds of things that are continuously going on. Uh, I mentioned Day of the Immigrant, and Chief uh, Koenig mentioned also. I was at the Day of the, the Immigrant, and we had our table welcoming Gainesville. And there's a table next to us with a policeman sitting there uh, in uniform. And I went over there to talk to him, and he had a sheet of paper with 46 languages on there. I didn't know some of these languages. 46 languages. Now, they're not all operational, but as she said, they're working on them. They are trying to be inclusive. They're trying to communicate, because I remember that incident. Uh, several years ago, when language was a barrier, when they couldn't understand what was going on. And they just assumed that this person spoke Spanish because it was from Guatemala, but we've got lots of languages. And I did a survey of languages uh, in one of my classes at University of Florida, and I found all of these languages that students spoke in their homes or they spoke as a second language, or some of the languages were those that they wanted to learn, they wanted to hear about. So the community IDs, that's certainly a good thing. And Steve and us in the Welcome in Gainesville are encouraging more people to get IDs. We don't want it just these so-called immigrants to have the IDs, to be isolated. If we all get IDs and present them, then that would be helpful. We don't want to isolate the immigrants. Now, I was trained as a planner, urban planner. So I, we, we would forever come together and we'd have community surveys and people input and we'd make these wonderful plans. These wonderful plans, great. We put them on a shelf. We put them on a shelf. Now this is up to us. We have got to make this blueprint a living document. A living document is a good one that we live by. Because being welcoming, getting all this input, is going to make us a better community. It's not doing anybody a favor. It's making us, all of us, a better community to live in. So thank you all so much for coming. Thank you, Robin and Mayor, uh, and all those other, other people who were a part of creating this Jenny uh, Steering Committee. So I, mean, I think that's really delightful to think about what we have in the future. The ease of immigrant members coming and getting involved in the PTA, joining in dance classes and so forth. But we have some challenges ahead. And those challenges have to do with equitable access, of which you'll see the last three uh, goals within the blueprint address. It's one thing to feel open. It's one thing to feel safe and, ex and accepting that openness that Ms. Barbara was talking about. To get there, we need to talk about language. We need to talk about ex equitable access to language because it is the link to health, to safety, and to a future, especially for the education of our children. I'm gonna ask two women to come forward. Uh, Dr. Laura Gonzalez, who's at the University of Florida Department of English, but also is behind Language Access Florida. And also, I would like Ms. Yeni Molina from Madre Sin Fronteras and the Human Rights Coalition of Alachua County to come forward. Share with us a little bit of the challenges that we have ahead, the work that we can do, and the next steps that we need to take to make access equitable. Thank you. Hola, buenas tardes. Bienvenidos a todos. Gracias por estar aquí. Mi nombre es Laura González. Y ha sido un, realmente un honor servir en el, en el comité de Gini durante estos últimos meses. He tenido la oportunidad de conocer y colaborar con los líderes de esta gran ciudad y condado. Good afternoon, everybody. 
My name is Laura Gonzalez, and it's been a real honor to serve on the Ginny Committee over the last few months. I guess it's been a year and some now. Um, getting the opportunity to know and collaborate from le with leaders from this amazing community, city, and county. Having spent many years researching language access after my family and I navigated our immigration transition from Santa Cruz, Bolivia to Orlando, Florida, and here now to Gainesville, Florida, I've learned many lessons. But perhaps the most important lesson that I've learned is this. Language is a lot more than words. It's about a lot more than words written down on paper, words spoken over a language line. Language is what connects us as human beings to each other, what allows us to express our ideas, our thoughts, to share our emotions, to make connections. Language is not just what we say, but also what goes unsaid, the stress and the pain that we feel in our bodies when we're silenced, when we're frustrated, and when we feel unheard. Language is also a civil right, protected by Title VI Civil Rights Act of 1964 and an Executive Order 13166, both of which seek to protect individuals' rights to access information in their own language in some agencies that receive federal funding. So this is not just something nice that we do because we care, but it's something that's protected by law. We appreciate that the city has already made important progress in addressing language access with the decision to contract a language line service for anyone calling into the city and the training of our government employees to ensure that callers are treated both e efficiently and, this is very important, respectfully. Based on this understanding of language access as a right, and as a pathway to inclusion, our Ginny workshops conducted research about language access across multiple sectors. And you can see some of these challenges um, listed on this slide. Without language access, our multilingual communities cannot report an emergency, they can't communicate with healthcare practitioners, they can't learn no new information, not even about where they can learn English, which is the claim we often hear in response. They can't participate or feel heard or seen in community events. The language access barriers intersect with all of our goals, especially health and education. There are other steps that we can take together to bridge these gaps in order to move forward toward inclusion. For example, in healthcare, our immigrant neighbors who don't speak English cannot access clinics, are not made aware of vaccination events, can't understand critical information related to their health and safety, as we continue to see this throughout the pandemic. Poor commitment to language access can mean that making appointments at some local, federally funded providers might require multiple transfers or unreturned calls, and eventually, many of people just give up. Often, there are misunderstandings of treatment or discharge instructions, which at local hospitals are not provided in languages other than English. So it's nice to provide a patient with interpretation when they're seeing the doctor, but it's also important to give them instructions before they leave so that they don't come back to the hospital needing further care. There's also a need for our healthcare providers to meet our immigrant community members where they are. Promoting services through faith institutions, community centers, and other places where people are. We often say, well, our immigrant neighbors don't show up, we don't see the need here, and that's because we're not going to where the need is. This critical groundwork that cannot be overlooked and is essential for gaining the trust and participation of all our neighbors. In education, our immigrant community members who don't speak English are not able to communicate with their children's teachers or have to wait weeks or even longer to enroll their children in school due to communication barriers. Just because interpretation is available doesn't mean that it's available all the time. Even in cases when children do not do speak English, not recognizing the languages spoken in children's homes means that barriers to communication still remain for parents whose involvement is critical to their children's educational success. We cannot put the, the burden of language access on children to tell their parents what's going on in school. Thus, the Ginny Working Group has come up with potential strategies to ameliorate these barriers to education. Besides having translations of important documents provided in the language of the student and the parents, we're also recommending the creation of a welcome center where parents of new students can access the information they need in a language they understand to ensure equitable access to education. So we're pleased that steps are being made by the county school system in exploration of engaging a language line and creating a welcoming center, and we're very grateful for that. Also, <laughs> there's more. <laughs> I'm almost done, though. Also, as the, as the Jenny Welcoming Survey illustrates, 
90% of immigrants want more opportunities to learn and improve their English. And this is something I've seen throughout over a decade of researching with bilingual and multilingual communities. There's a want and a desire to learn English, but there's not always access to doing so. Community agencies can show support for this by increasing the number and location of English learning classes and making sure that our foreign born neighbors are actually aware of these opportunities through consistent outreach in their networks, on their social media channels, in their WhatsApp groups. As we hope you'll notice when reading through the blueprint, all five goals are interrelated and they all require resources, ongoing training and updating, and most importantly, a continuous commitment across service sectors, agencies, businesses, and our immigrant neighbors themselves. So I wanna end by bringing attention to the fact that inclusion is important, not only for our immigrant neighbors, but for all people in our community. This is evidence in the overlaps between language access, disability justice, and racial justice, and community participation, as evidence in the recent injustice experienced by our community member, Quindale Holmes. When we centralize language and its connections to safety, health, and education, we can work toward models of inclusivity that truly consider the wide diversity that's present in this room today and in our community outside of these doors. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, full house, my goodness, wow means a lot to see everybody, even though I might not know you by name. Um, a lot of my uh, fellow members from Madres Sin Fronteras are at work still. They're still picking up with kids from school. And in behalf of them and the Human Rights Coalition, I thank you, every single one of you, and the people who are uh, seeing us through Zoom. Thank you for being here and letting us know that you are truly becoming a welcoming city. Yes, it's been uh, challenging. Uh, it's been many years of ups and downs, more downs than ups sometimes, but it means a lot to the community to to see how everybody is, is trying to make us feel comfortable and includes, included. Means a lot not to go through all the difficulties of picking up our kids from school because we didn't have a proper identification. Uh, people were not properly trained in accepting a passport as a, um, proper identification. Luckily and thank, thankfully uh, to the city commission and all other agencies, the community ID is now here and like, um, like somebody else was uh, inviting everybody to get one, please do so. Uh, this is not just for Latinos, no, it's for everyone who believes in a inclusive community. means a lot to be able to enroll a kid in a after school program. Not missing the deadline because I didn't receive the email. Luckily, I can speak a little bit of English, but that's not the same for other people that are just arriving and trying to make a better life in this community. Emails can be sent. Um, not everybody has access to a smartphone. Um, and the barrier, having a, a child translating for a parent, it's definitely not the best thing. Um, we are missing meetings. We are not going to special events in schools. Somebody was mentioning how um, you don't get to see us. You don't get to see us. And you think, oh, Gainesville doesn't have many immigrants. We're the ones working 12-hour shifts in the restaurants, hotel industry. We are here. And I know um, we have been working uh, very hard in creating a safe community. We definitely have lots of steps um, that we need to address. 
and but we are so happy and it's definitely a different environment it feels totally different from five years ago or six years ago six years ago i wouldn't stand here and and say my name my name is jennifer and i live here yes i do i do I live here, it's been 11 years, and I love it. And I wanna make everybody feel safe. Um, it means so much to be able to call the police, call the sheriff, and, and report a crime. Though that broken link, that broken, you know, um, situation we had going on with the law enforcement is it's being amended and it's it's beautiful because we can now feel safe reporting a crime and not being okay being uh you'd say a victim of a crime so um the genie committee has meant so much for for us for the immigrant community, and we are so thankful. Madres Sin Fronteras, uh, they told me to make sure I thank you guys, and from the bottom of my heart, I truly see Gainesville becoming that welcoming city it's always been meant to be. So thanks again, and thank you, thank you. So this last set of three goals obviously was a lot to take in. A couple things to talk about again that are victories or opportunities. One is first of all, I do want to recognize that as we speak about accessing English classes, I'm very appreciative that the public library representatives from adult education and those who provide English classes are here with us. Thank you both for, for joining us on that. We do know that there are a variety of opportunities for community members. That information needs to be made available in other languages so that people know those English classes are available. And as Laura had mentioned, we need them available through different uh, mechanisms. I'm sorry they're not reading the Gainesville Sun. They may not be on the city Facebook. We need to reach out and here is a room full of people with networks and we are ready to assist. Secondly, I'd like to make that reminder about the community ID hosted through the Human Rights Coalition of Alachua County. It is available to all of us twice a month. It's easy to sign up, and it's something that we can all proudly use. Last is to mention that we do have language institutes coming up, so anyone here from an association, an agency, or a government office that would like to learn more about how to use language lines, how to blend this into your work, Language Access Florida will be offering those institutes this summer. And it's an opportunity to work with peers and really figure out how we can resolve these problems within our own agencies. I would be also, I was very concerned that I do not forget to mention Gracia Fernandez from the Communications Office, who is the person behind all of the translation into Spanish that we have benefited from at the, the Gini Project. So special thank you to you. I'd like to remember uh, Ms. Shelby Taylor, who's no longer at the communications office, but really has built a sense of unity um, in this work. And so thank you also to Rosanna, to Dustin, to Raul, to everybody who I don't yet know, but communications is amazing. We thank you for that. And when we talk about language, we can't forget uh, the beauty of food, music, and poetry. So food is coming up. We have one more speaker. We do have some refreshments. We'll be asking you to join us on that. In terms of music, well, I think that um, thankfully the world has changed in the last 20 years, whether you call it world music or you've just gotten informed, there's a lot of ways to celebrate. And then the music that we have locally here is really thanks to Alachua County Poet Laureate, Stan Richardson, who we have appreciated getting to know we thank him from the bottom of our heart for a beautiful poem that you will find on the final page of the booklet. Um, a real reflection that means together we're all really realizing the work that we have ahead. 
So speaking of that, I have one last speaker, and I'd like to ask Jyoti Parmar to come forward. Um, she's going to speak to us just briefly about these next steps, because there are exciting things that are ahead. And as Barbara had mentioned, this is a living document. And we at the steering committee are very committed to making sure that the action and the changes are enforced. So Jyoti, why don't you come forward and share with us a few more things. Thank you all. Wow. This was a really heartwarming um, hour that I've been here. Um, all the points that I wanted to make have already been made. <laughs> so let me see if I can find the few words that I had put together. So um, as you might know, some of you know, my name is Jyoti Parmar and I'm the founder of the Anti-Hate Team of Florida. And I'm one of the famous 16-member community group that has been working with the Ginny Project and with the Rural Women's Health Project to put this blueprint together. And on behalf of all of us, I'd like to thank all of you so much for coming to this blueprint launch meeting. I particularly also want to thank uh, Mayor Lauren Poe at the last city commission meeting. Your closing words really touched our hearts. Thank you for that. Um, this plan, as has been mentioned, has come together from many hours, hundreds, at least 100 hours of work with meeting with the community and surveying and gathering together all our ideas. And the real work has actually just started. This, these are the recommendations we've made, the needs we've identified. And now we start the work of implementing these recommendations. Um, the City Commission's recent vote for the language access only encompasses a small portion of what Ginny hopes to achieve, and we're looking forward to continuing our work together with the city, the county, the school board, and community organizations. The Ginny Steering Committee, the 16-member famous committee, <laughs> is committed to commit continuing our work to offering support to agencies wishing guidance in shifting policies or procedures, and of course, we'll be here to monitor our advances. Please help move this work forward uh, by completing the survey on your seats. Share it with your friends, with your neighbors. Um, link them to the website for the, with, the, with, the, with the surveys in the different languages. It is a way to be heard and to get involved. And for those who are online, um, reach out to the steering committee at Ginny, G-I-N-I, at R-W-H-P, that's Rural Women's Health Project, Dot org, Ginny at rwhp.org. More than anything else, I want to say we know that a welcoming city is one where the neighbors welcome each other and embrace the critical work of building a more inclusive community. As, as Ginny moves forward this summer with the next steps, the, ed the education assemblies, the language access assemblies, and the day of immigration celebration, we will be counting on all of our neighbors, all of you, indigenous, native born, and immigrant, to work with us in spreading the word and supporting your immigrant neighbors. At the end of the day, it is the heartfelt intention of the greater Gainesville and Alachua County community that brings all the changes we seek about. Thank you all for being here. As we presented the blueprint, you should find more surveys and the booklets at your seats. And thank you for helping move Gainesville and Alachua County forward into an even more welcoming city. Thank you. So obviously after that, there's not a lot more to say. Um, I do want to just a uh, couple of things. There was a survey on your seat. Uh, please do take a moment to fill that out. The steering committee is moved by the voices of our community. Uh, this is not something that we spend hours thinking about alone. Uh, those words will move us forward. So take a moment and there will be a pink basket at the back table where you can drop that. Uh, second, we have an amazing opportunity to hear from the voices of foreign born neighbors they were collecting stories from our multilingual neighbors in this room over here, thanks to Language Access Florida and to Valentina Sierra, who is a University of Florida master's student. They have been collecting the voices of our community um, in order to really lift up language diversity. 
We appreciate uh, Eric Siegel's here from Harn Museum, where we had a wonderful opportunity during museum nights to uh, take advantage of the voices of 20 community members, and we would like to be moving towards and sharing those with you back in the future. Uh, in closing, we do have some amazing refreshments, uh, thanks to the West African fusion foods of Flavorful, as well as Brazilian treats, uh, treats from Esfahayas de Carlos. Uh, we hope you will stay and join us for those. What I would like to do is ask anybody here who's been working on Ginny to please stand up and come forward. I'd really appreciate if we could see some of those amazing voices <laughs> and faces, sorry. <laughs> So if you all can come forward here, we'd like to take a moment and get really actually a round of applause for the amazing people. Ethan, if you want to step forward. I think Miss Annie is going to take a photo for us. Um, and we, we want to remind you that this weekend, don't let the weather get in your way. India Fest, Bo Diddley Plaza, this weekend, we need to all be there. And we look forward to seeing you then. Please help yourself, refreshments in the other room. A round of applause for this amazing group.